more surprising perhaps, were their innovations in medicine. At a time when Europeans were praying to the bones of their saints to cure their illnesses, Muslim physicians developed an innovative theory that disease was transmitted through tiny airborne organisms, the precursor to the study of germs. They determined that sick patients should be quarantined and then treated. This is the basis of the institution most fundamental to medicine today, the hospital. Funded mainly through religious endowments, Muslim hospitals had separate wards for patients suffering from different kinds of disease. Even mental illness was treated. Their studies of anatomy were so sophisticated that they remained in use by Muslim and European physicians for 600 years. Muslim scientists were especially intrigued by light, lenses, and the physiology of the human eye. The father of optics was a Muslim named Ibn al-Haytham. His work with lenses eventually led to the invention of the modern camera. He produced the first treatise that ventured to explain how the eye actually sees. A thousand years before the West dared to take up the practice, Muslim doctors were removing cataracts surgically, clearing them from the eye with a hollow needle. But for all this knowledge to transform and illuminate an empire, it had to be copied and shared across a hundred different cities in the Islamic world. For this, there was a new invention one that is still fundamental to learning and knowledge today. Paper. Around the year 700, 750, when Muslim armies reached Central Asia, they encountered paper for the first time. And very quickly, the Muslim bureaucracy um, started using paper. You find that, you know, within 50 years it's in Syria, and then a few years after that it's in, it's in Egypt, and then it's in North Africa, and then it's in, in Sicily, and then it's in Spain. And that's where Europe learned to make paper from. They learned to make it from the Arabs. We begin to have people with family names like papermaker. So in other words, it, not only uh, that paper was available, it must have become a very, very uh, widespread industry. And hence, the acquisition of books must have also become very easy. With the wide use of books and paper, hundreds of scribes, some of whom were women, were kept busy transcribing the translations and new writings of the Baghdad scholars. All of this knowledge that's being acquired from the Greeks and from the Indians and from Central Asia and stuff is all being written down in books on paper. And that these books are being copied and recopied and sent around. We know, for example, that there was a street of booksellers um, with more than a hundred shops, each one with paper and books for sale. Um, and this is a time when, you know, in uh, Europe, a monastery would be lucky if it had five or ten books. While the monks of the West were hoarding their wisdom on scraps of expensive parchment, paper enabled Islamic civilization to spread its newfound knowledge far and wide, creating a single community linking three continents. So the G 